Let's continue uh, studying directional derivatives and uh, time for some help. A theorem. A theorem that doesn't involve the limit calculation to find our directional derivative. So if we have a function z equals uh, f of xy and it could be modified for more and u is a unit vector. Remember we had um, u is equal to components u1 and u2 has to be a unit vector. Then the directional derivative or the change in z as we go the direction of the unit vector is given by the following formula. Partial derivative of x for our function multiplied by the first component. So the x component is going to go together. Partial derivative of y of the function multiplied by the second component. And this will supposedly give us the calculation for the directional derivative without having to do a limit process, a definition. So have you seen anything that looks like this? If I perhaps shorten it just a bit, take out some of those extra quantities and just look at sort of the raw notation as a shorthand. Does this look familiar? So just from our past, we had something called the total differential where df equaled the x partial derivative times dx and the y partial derivative times dy and we had one of our chain rules well actually both of them but um, we had a chain rule that said df dt for a single independent variable was the x partial derivative times dx dt and the y partial derivative multiplied by dy dt. I mean, look how similar these expressions are. They both have a similar kind of a sum where the partial derivatives are multiplied by something. Now I could really ask you to stretch to the, back to the beginning of the course, but this may be too far of a stretch. Uh, but I don't know. There's another way to write this. This is the dot product of two vectors. This is the dot product of two vectors. Dot product. And this is what I would probably call our our actual shortcut. We have a vector made up of the partial derivatives of our function and we have a vector um, in this case that is our uh, unit vector the direction we're going for directional derivative and we're going to take this for a test drive on a problem that we did by definition in the previous segment. So I'm going to do a little switcheroo here. You know what? Maybe I just leave it like this. Just slide it up as far as I can. So we had a direction, but it wasn't a unit vector. To find the unit vector, we had to find the magnitude of that vector and divide by the magnitude and this we have already done previously negative three-fifths and four-fifths was our unit vector. So that would be u1 and u2. We need the partial derivatives so I need the x partial derivative of the function which was 6x, well not was because we haven't done this yet, it is 6x minus 5 
oh, if x is the variable, derivative of x is 1 minus 5y. And then if I were to use the coordinates of my point, 1 and negative 2 here, 6 multiplied by 1 minus 5 times negative 2, that would be 16. I'm, I'm collecting parts, folks. I'm not ready to assemble it into the formula yet. I don't have all the parts I need. I'll slide back if I need to get there. The y parcel derivative of the function, uh, well that's going to be 0 minus 5. If y is the variable, derivative of y is 1, minus 5x is left over. And if I do that computation at the given point, um, that's going to be negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5. Okay? That's not so bad. Now, the formula. The formula says that our, and let's just go a little bit further up here, but I don't want to lose everything. I need that dot product showing. There we go. The directional derivative of this function at that point in that direction is the dot product of these two partial derivatives and the unit vector. Let's see, 16 multiplied by negative 3 fifths is negative 48 fifths. Minus 5 times 4 fifths is negative 20 fifths. And this is equal to negative 68 over 5, which is the same as by the definition. And I have to tell you, when you have this much arithmetic, there's pressure being recorded right now too. It's kind of nice when it comes out to be the same. So, if you were in my classroom, you might imagine a problem that starts like this, and I have you find the directional derivative by definition, and then using the theorem, and see if you can get uh, solutions that um, agree with each other. All right. Come back for more. We're not quite done yet.